Today on Lockdown Red Wings, Lucas Raymond and the top line single-handedly keep the Detroit Red Wings playoff hopes alive. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scotty's a freelance journalist for the Detroit News, as well as the host of Locked On Tigers. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you need to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash Lockdown to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. Wow. Uh, that's, man, I have such a whirlwind of emotions right now from extreme joy regarding the comeback and Lucas Raymond's game to extreme anger with the officiating and just the fact that they still ended up dropping this game and had dropped two must-win games. I... I'm manic. I think that is the best word to use it. And I don't sound it right now, but Scotty can attest before we started recording. I, I I'm manic. I do not know. They, they just won't let me die. Scotty. They won't let me die. Three games left. They got one point out of this one to be one point back of the Pittsburgh Penguins who now hold the second wild card spot. And they're in a three-way tie for that first team on the outside looking in, tied with the Capitals and the Flyers with 85 points. Three games left. They're still alive, but only one team can get the playoff spot. They, they just won't let me die. And you use that analogy twice in the last couple of weeks about the, uh, th- like the thousand paper cuts or whatever. And I just, the arrows, that's what it was. And it just, they won't, they just won't let me die. But holy crap, Lucas Raymond. <laughs> you just repeated yourself about six times in two minutes there. Um, yeah, man, it is it is unbelievably wild. The situation that we find ourselves in with this hockey team where they have now taken one point out of four in two games that we called must win. And yet they are not out of it. They are still, they are a point back with three games left because the Capitals got boat raced uh, and the the Flyers won, which doesn't help you a boatload. But uh, the you are now in a position where, like you said, there, there's a huge tie right there and you are a point out with three games left. And if you compare and contrast who all of these teams play, you have Toronto, which obviously is a tall task, but then you have Montreal, Montreal to end the season. And a lot of these other teams play each other, right? The Philly and, and Washington and whatnot. A lot of these guys are playing each other. It, it is, it is absolutely wild that even after an overtime loss and a regulation loss in both of these games, we're looking around and we're going, well, it's it's still not over. And I, I, like you said, I've said it a million times over the last two weeks. They have done just enough to keep themselves in it at every possible fork in the road. They 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 will not take it and run. They, they will not take it and just catapult themselves into the playoffs. But they also won't completely collapse to the point where they are out of it. They, they continue to just it, – it's like that old – Geico commercial where the guy has the the dollar bill on the fishing line. He goes, Ooh, Oh, you almost had it. it. You know, you gotta be quicker than that. That's what this feels like consistently. And, and it's not just the Red Wings either. That's the crazy. No, part. it's every single team in this race. It's all four of them. Literally all four of them. Like the Capitals held on the, or rather the Flyers held on to a playoff spot all year and just be, finally began to slide post trade deadline slid out of the playoff spot. The Capitals were bad all year, got hot and then lost six straight. The Penguins were mediocre all year at post trade deadline. They got, they've gotten last month. They've gotten hot enough to get themselves back in the race. Islanders were mediocre all year, got hot one, six straight, then lost six straight. And now they're back and they're playing good hockey again. It's just been every single team. It, my buddy Kenny described it. It's hot potato. Yeah. 
the teams are just since Sunday, we've had three different teams holding on to that second wild card spot. Detroit That's on so Sunday, ridiculous. Washington on Tuesday, and now Pittsburgh on Thursday. Nobody Third. wants this thing. And I mean, Correct. you could make the argument that no one more so than the Red Wings don't want this thing because they had such a stranglehold. Same with the Flyers had such a stranglehold on their, their playoff position and both of them slipped massively. But I mean, I'm manic right now because I'm both just absolutely pumped about Lucas Raymond's performance. And he's an obvious difference maker in this hockey game, even despite a loss. Um, and then also just completely frustrated with the fact that they cannot, they've lost two back-to-back games by one goal. They just cannot seem to get over that hump. They get good goaltending in Washington and then they can't score. They score a plethora in this game, but can't get goal, good goaltending. Like it's just, if it's not one thing, it's the other right now, but I'm digressing. Let's let's hone in on how these games go, right? And how these recaps go before we just ramble for th- or I ramble for 30 minutes. I'm more liable than you are. <laughs> I was going to say we, yeah, we. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> difference maker number one, obviously Lucas Raymond, right? Four point nine, four point nights, second career hat trick. He, I mean, and you could say this about the entire line, but no one more so than Lucas Raymond single-handedly thrust this team into overtime to keep their playoff hopes alive. You lose this game in regulation your season's basically over. Like, yeah, it, the, the dagger's not in, the coffin's not closed, the fat lady hasn't sung yet, right? You're, it's not over with three games remaining, but if you get zero points, the climb back in is so much harder. Now you need a regulation win and for the Penguins to lose. That's it, and you'll be in the second wild card. So you're still very much alive because Lucas Raymond went God mode and scored three goals and had a primary assist on a huge uh, Dylan Larkin goal. He's got 29 goals on the season. And Scotty, I think we just discussed in the preseason, like when we were talking point, possible point productions for Lucas Raymond, right? We said 60 point guy, probably bulk of his career, maybe 70 points, but we thought he was a pass first guy would probably routinely get 20 goals, but would struggle to hit 30. He's got three games left and he's one goal shy of 30. I seriously underestimated the goal scoring ability he has. And he found that goal scoring ability about halfway through the season where he just started pulling the trigger a lot more. And he scored three beautiful goals in this one. Yeah. This is why you, uh, this is why you don't jump to conclusions about players before they can like legally drink. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I think back to all of the conversations we had about him last year and uh, over the off season and whatnot, and people that were upset and, and people that said he, he wasn't an asset to this team and in the long term, you know, question marks surrounding him and whatnot. And it's, you know, now you see why you, you, you can't be uh, too reactionary with, progression and development of young players like that especially players that are highly touted and showed flashes like he did in his rookie year so yeah man he he was absolutely phenomenal I, I think he is the biggest difference maker in this hockey game if you're talking on a, in a positive light just because uh that top line in general I mean I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit later they you know Lalone ran them into the 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 ice right he kept them out there and the reason why is because they were absolutely phenomenal and single-handedly dragged this team to a point uh the, the rest of the team was not productive just straight up we can call it what it is we, we can be blunt about it right that they, they, they weren't productive that the rest of the team in terms of uh in terms of offense so Jeff what? Petrie scored a goal so I want you to take that back I'm I won't I'm so I'm messing with you <laughs> so um yeah, it's that's just uh, and and like you said, the, the top line as a whole, but obviously the biggest uh, factor in that top line production was, was very much Lucas Raymond. Uh, well, I was going to jump the gun and talk about some other players on that line, but we'll save that for notable performers. But yeah, man, he he was phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we're talking about the top lines. So we might as well just talk like wrap them into the difference maker. Obviously, driven mostly by Lucas Raymond, but you know, Dylan Larkin had a goal and I think two assists, a goal and one assist in this hockey yeah. game. And Cat had what three assists, and that apple he had to Raymond was an absolute beauty. I mean, the one where he Raymond went in all alone and deked Nedeljkovic. That's yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. So Larkin got the assist on that one. 
Uh, Raymond, beautiful feed to Larkin out front for a goal. And then, lo like, low-key, really good play. Like, that first goal by Raymond also doesn't happen without Alex Dabrinka and Morris Sider. Yeah. You know, Dabrinka didn't give up on the play. He was aggressive on the forecheck, forcing the defender to send that puck up the boards. Morris Sider pinches in. When that puck comes back to the defender, Dabrinka strips it and then takes a nice low shot off the pads for Raymond to quickly get the rebound to tie it up 1-1. So like that top line, Raymond, uh, Raymond with four points, Larkin and Debrinket each with three points. It, it was dy dynamite. And credit to Derek Lalone too, right? Like we've been critical of Derek Lalone at times, yeah. but in during the broadcast, they said that they split up Kane and Debrinket because Debrinket's more north south and Kane's more east west, and they wanted to put Debrinket with somebody who with a line that benefits from his north south style. And holy crap. Did that line benefit? And, you know, if you go back to the start of the season, this was the top line at the start of the year before Kane came along. Now, I understand eventually they cooled off, and that's why they had to be split back up, but it really worked in this game, but unfortunately, none of the other three lines could do anything. And, you know, we'll talk about that, notable performers, but we got to get to a break. Scotty, in segment two, I mean, we still got... This is a game that had a lot of difference makers, I feel. Like, more, almost as many difference making makers as notable performances. So we'll talk about that in segment two of Lockdown Red Wings. Stay tuned for that. Got to talk to you guys today about Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. But with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team, their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk through it. Talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step-by-step. -step. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team and thousands of five-star reviews on Google and trust pilot from customers who found their best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash lockdown NHL or click the link in the description to get your free link or free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash Locked on NHL. Segment two, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty, other difference makers in this game. You mentioned somebody in pre-show that I actually agreed with. Yeah, no, I for me, I, I think the biggest difference maker from maybe a more negative light, unfortunately, is Alex Lyon. Uh, this was not a good performance by him really whatsoever. Uh, this was a, a really, really weak showing, and it's unfortunate because they have relied so heavily on him all season, which we've covered a lot, but especially in the last few weeks, he has really been good and just not getting rewarded in the win-loss column. And you brought that up a couple episodes ago, and, and it's just, it, it sucks for a lot of reasons because of the team's perspective, but uh, it just it, <laughs> it it sucks when you what you said at the beginning when you can't line everything up you you score a lot of goals finally you kind of have that breakthrough you have a lot of good offense going your way and uh, your you know goalie do, does that it's it, it's really unfortunate I was trying to think of an analogy and I couldn't think of one um, so uh, <laughs> just just really unfortunate and yeah he he struggled mightily I mean you look at the goals that he gave up. Uh, mm -hmm. I think multiple softies, not that there wasn't some defensive breakdowns, certainly, uh, that kind of aided him, but like that Jeff Carter goal can't happen like in any capacity. Uh, just, it, it was a really, really weak showing. And, uh, I, I want to say he had two goals against him, like five shots into the game for the Penguins. And I think he had three at like 10, like it was just a, a really bad, his save percentage is not. I'm, I'm imagining not very pretty after this one. Seven, seven, eight save percentage yeah, in okay. this game. And so he allowed six goals. He allowed six goals on 27 shots. Back to back games, by the way, that were the Red Wings outshot their opponent, which is something we are not used to. Uh, Red Wings had 30 shots in this game. But man, I, Alex Line did not play well. Neither did Alex, Alexander Nedeljkovic. This was the opposite of Tuesday showing where it was two yeah. goaltenders were going to determine the game. It, I'm sorry for the, the the silence. I just, 
I'm I'm thinking about the goals that the Red Wings allowed, and I'm thinking about the situation that line was put in. He was not done any favors whatsoever by the uh, you look at the Chris Latangle two on one. They pass that puck across the crease. Petrie makes a bad pinch. Simon Edmondson yeah. doesn't look for the guy breaking in late. So it's an easy pass to Chris Latang, but the shot wasn't a good one. It was it was a, a weak shot that barely, if it did, even leave the ice and it beat Alex Lyon. So yeah, shouldn't have been a two on one rush. Alex Lyon's got to make the save. You know, the Crosby goal, that's on more on David Perron not being able to fully cover Crosby. That was his guy. He didn't get he didn't cover him. So I don't give Alex Lyon blame on that one. Brian Rust's goal, got to make the save. I got to make the save on the shot. I, I mean, I under, and I, I have other thoughts on the Brian Russ goal as well, uh, considering that there's an uncalled penalty, and that'll be, we'll talk about that with a third difference maker, a rare third difference maker in this game. Uh, but the Jeff Carter one, you know, another situation like Daniel Sprung really messed up on the blue line on the power play. Jeff Carter comes down on a breakaway, but that shot was taken from like near the top of the circle, if not the inside of the circle, and like just beat him clean. Like at some point, even though you're put in bad situations time and time again, you have got to make a save. And I don't think that that's egregious for us to ask our goaltender to make a save when you're facing less than 27 shots. I know those were quality attempts. I know, but I don't think it's too much for us to ask Alex on to make a save. And I hate that saying that because I came on here after the Washington game and we've talked about how good he has been since the end of March, like coming into the Washington game, he had a nine, three, five save percentage had a nine fifth in the, the five games prior to that. And then he had a nine 14 save percentage against Washington. And so coming in here, you're thinking we'll get another quality performance. And he just wasn't again. I understand it's just as much on the defense, putting him in bad positions, but your goalie's got to make a save. And that's yeah. just, that's the bottom line again. It, yeah. I, multiple of those shots should not have, <laughs> were, were even if they are high danger or if there were defensive breakdowns leading up to them, you uh, again, that score sheet kind of says it all. Uh, there, this was just not a good performance by him, yeah. Not I a mean, good performance it, by Stripes either, I think. That's the third difference maker in this game, and you know, there's definitely something to be said about you know, if you get a power play, do something with it. And the Red Wings power play has that's a notable performance. The power play has been kind of stinky <laughs> since this slide has started to say that, but like you, you did get power plays in this game and you failed to do anything with them. You had three to be exact and you didn't score on a single one despite having looked and you gave up a shorthanded goal. So that's a problem. But the officiating in the second period had me livid and they're almost let off on a hook a little bit by the fact that Raymond single-handedly willed this team yeah. back into a point because if they this game had ended in regulation I had to come on here and been like the sole difference maker in this hockey game is the officiating and I don't do that you know me Scotty I come on here I came on here after the Washington game after they missed the high stick that broke Andrew Cop's face <laughs> and said well they still had power plays they didn't do anything with them and while that's the case in this game I am at a, I, I cannot understand how your job as an official is to call penalties, but there is a mandate in this freaking league to call it even. And in tight games with playoff implications, you don't want to affect the game. So you put the whistles away and ignore blatant calls. And in this case, blatant dangerous penalties for nothing. And I'm talking about three straight cross checks yeah, to JT Confer's back behind the net. I'm talking about the fact that Shane Gosses Bear was going to pursue a puck in the corner and he got punched in the face and then dangerously tripped into the post right in front of the referee to no whistle. I'm talking about Lucas Raymond pursuing a loose puck and getting tripped by Riley in front of the stripes that directly led to Brian Russ's goal to give them a four to two lead. Those are conscious decisions to not call penalties. And in your attempt to not affect the outcome of the game, you are thereby affecting the outcome of the game. It is egregious and wrong that there, this league cares more about keeping the calls even and making, letting the boys play rather than calling penalties that are done in front of you. That is your damn job. Word. No. Word, yeah, I, I respect. I look, man, I, yeah, they were blatant. 
missed calls, I guess, is the word. And, and I, I think the most frustrating ones are the ones that do happen right in front of a referee. And you're like, what else has to happen? What else do we have to do here to get a call? And it, it definitely, I, I think there's a little bit of like, this is the team we watch every night. So it feels like it's always us kind of thing. I don't want to make it sound like that. But it's not just this, us. This is a league-wide problem. In, right. In, in this game, in a vacuum, this was ridiculous. Like, like, like genuinely, that was, that was egregious. Those non-calls had a legitimate impact on the outcome of the game. Not calling those penalties leads directly to us not getting power play time, which prevents us from getting scoring opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And again, I understand they didn't do anything with the three power plays they had. That's that's a real thing. That's a Red Wings problem. But they should have given, been given different opportunities outside of that. And the non-call on the Raymond trip directly yeah, created that, a goal. That one's so, wild to me. Like, that that's what like I mean. Not wild. There, the the league not wanting the officiating to determine hockey games directly led to the officiating determining a hockey game. Yeah, that straight up, your job is as an official is to call penalties. So when a penalty happens, your job is to call it, not say, "Well, the la- the Penguins, or the Red Wings got the last power play, so we don't want to give them another one before we give them the Pittsburgh Penguins one." And that's not on the like that's on the officiating, but it goes above that too. And not to not to do my whole argument again. But like the end, this is a thing from the NHL. They care more about keeping penalties even to give like the illusion of fairness than actually calling it fair. This is why the Panthers are such a good hockey team because they understand that the officials are only going to call so many penalties on your own team. So they go out there and they're a dirty hockey team. So what made the Bruins so successful? They go out there and they're a dirty hockey team because they know that you're only going to get one, maybe two penalties before the officials give you one back. And it's not right. That's not how officiating in sports should go. That's literally not their job. Their job is to literally call it as they see it, and they don't, and it's wrong. Word. All right. When we come back in segment three, uh, we'll move on to notable performers. Uh, Yeah, so stay tuned for that. (sighs) Got to talk to you guys today about Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting. Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Indeed does the hard hiring work for you. Sponsor a job and they'll match you with quality candidates whose resume resumes on Indeed fit your job description right when you post. With Indeed, you can start hiring fast. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent. Indeed, visit Indeed.com slash LockedOn to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash LockedOn. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Indeed, you do. There it is. Okay, I was wondering. Uh, also got to talk to you guys today about factor eat stress-free with this spring with factors, delicious, ready to eat meals. Every, every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like calorie, smart keto protein plus or vegan and veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast on the go, lunch snacks and beverages to help you stay fueled and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started and fuel up. For your springtime goals, they have tail. They are tailored to your schedule. Customize your weekly meals with flexibility, and to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule delivery deliveries to suit yourself. You're so ce- if you're celebrating Earth Day, so are they. Look out for the Earth Month Earth Month Eats badge on the menu for their lowest carbon footprint meals. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off your first order plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50. Segment three locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty, as far as difference makers, I'm sorry, notable performances go, you know, what else stood out to you in this hockey game? That's worth noting. 
Yeah, I mean, I I think that uh, I mean we already talked about it earlier, but that the rest of the top line as well. You mentioned Larkin, Cat uh, had a pretty solid game. Um, I I think really for me the notable performance is the how notable it was that the, how little production came outside of the top line. <laughs> yeah. I think that that was the one of the if not the most notable thing on the score sheet here. Uh, after the game that this was again as I said earlier this top line was was rode into the dirt I I mean they played so much and stay I mean especially in the second half in in the third period right I mean it was pretty much entirely just the top six out there and the top line was the only line that was producing and I think it's it's just frustrating I guess is the word when We've been talking all year about how this team has been scoring goals because of the depth, and they don't have a, a 40, 45 goal score, right? We 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 thought that we were going to get that high-end goal score in Cat. He hasn't been that in year one, but he's been producing, and he's been getting points still. And they've been getting a lot of scoring depth down the roster. And I think it's really frustrating when back against the wall, we go right back to, to you know, you shut down the top line, you shut down the Red Wings, which is something we haven't said. You know, that was a big thing in like the, the Larkin Mantha era, right? It was just like, if you can just stop that line, that's it. And I'm certainly not comparing those two teams or those lines or anything like that. But it, it's just, it's, it's really frustrating when that is such a strong point and such a focal point for your team all season is depth scoring, you know, top to bottom, you're getting goals from, from everywhere. And then in the biggest game of the season up to this point, it's, it's one line doing everything. And then they still will do to the, to a point, And that's awesome. But um, it's, it's frustrating really is the word because we're going to talk about whether we make the postseason or not uh, this summer, we're going to talk about how the depth scoring was good. It's just in this one game, it wasn't. Right, like the top six in this game, your Comfer and uh, Larkin both had over twenty minutes in this hockey game. They they each closed in on twenty minutes in this hockey game, and then your third line and fourth line centers and Joe Valeno and Christian Fisher. I mean, I think Zarnik centered the fourth line. I can't remember, but you know that fourth line barely got any ice time. I don't think they even cr- eclipsed ten minutes. Zach Aston recently had five minutes of total ice time, which you knew coming in. Zarnik only had eight minutes. Christian Fisher in this hockey game had 10 minutes. Joe Valeno on the third line, Sprung and Fabry each had 10 or 11 minutes. Like they were intentionally not giving them ice time. One, not to ex- because you couldn't trust to expose them to the, what is crazy to say, even still the better depth in the Pittsburgh Penguins. But at the same time, like, you, you also knew you were going to ride that top line very hard in this hockey game. And I just, I, I appreciated a little bit of ice time that fourth line did. I appreciated the effort they had in there. Obviously, Aston Reese had a penalty in the third period. That stunk. But, I mean, they did produce two really good scoring chances. But outside of that, like, they were outclassed. Same thing with the third pe- the third line. They were outclassed. Sprung on the power play. No, that's not their five-on-five line, but on the power play. Had a horrible turnover. So, it's like, you couldn't, your second line, even though they got a ton of minutes, didn't do anything either. Comfer. Perron and Kane were neutralized. You had legitimately one line in this game doing everything. And like it, that goes back to the argument I made yesterday about the playing it safe versus, versus maybe calling up somebody who can make an impact. Like I, I'm not saying either one is right because you call up, you know, Casper and maybe he makes some crucial, like you saw Edvinson in this game, make a rookie mistake near the end of the third period that almost cost them the game, almost cost them the point rather. So like you can't call up a guy who, like to your point yesterday, who has one game of NHL experience, he might make that mistake and it costs you a game. But like, that's just the give and take of whether or not like you're right in that top line, regardless, I feel. So I don't know. I'm very torn on it. All I know is the depth scoring has completely evaporated. And that is a real shame because that's really what carried you through a large portion of this year is Daniel Sprong, Robbie Favre, David Perron, guys like that scoring goals. Shane Gossespair, guys like that scoring goals. And like, then you go on the power play in this game, something else that carried you through a large portion of this year, and that completely falls flaccid too, right? And falls flaccid in results, but isn't wasn't without opportunities either. Because on that second, on the power play in which 
Carter came down and scored, right? Gosses Bear hit the post. They fed to bring it. The ring was back door, but they fed it to his weak side. He's he's uh what a righty, right? And they shot, they gave it to his left side. So he couldn't handle the puck on a beautiful play. And then Kane, I think they just barely poked a puck out of his range for a shot. David Perron rung one off the post, and that one's at five on five. But to the power play in particular, like it's had opportunities, but it's not converting. And then for them to come right back down on a Daniel Sprong giveaway sucks. And you know, that leads into the other notable performance was the defensive mistakes, right? And we teased that with the Alex Lyon performance. You know, those two things were coupled together. You can't be turning the puck over at the blue line like that up, you know, when you're trying to pull within one, you can't be committing on a two on one to the puck carrier at the blue line with a guy streaking down the opposite side. You can't give up on covering the third man in, especially when it's Sidney Crosby, you know, like defensive lapses, creating mistakes. Like that didn't help Alex Lyon either. So while there's a lot to love about the performance in this hockey game and the never quit attitude and the comeback and the, how much Lucas Raymond's going to get paid in the off season, the issues were still there. They were very prominent. And I do think you are missing Rasmussen and cop as much as we like, as much as the fan base likes to give them crap at times. Yeah, I, I think you miss them you know, in a pretty big way. Not to say that the <clears throat> outcome of the game would have been substantially different or anything, but especially those two being defensive-minded players. Uh, and, you know, who's to say when they would have been on the ice and, and whatnot. But uh, I, I think you at least give yourself a more of a fighting chance. And again, you put yourself in a position where your depth can actually be an asset and not just uh, well fill time while the top line rests. <laughs> like there's a difference between oh, like your you know your second or third or, or even I guess the occasional fourth line, but like your your middle six is actually out there for a reason versus the only reason being giving your top line some some you know breathing. Yeah, man. I I don't think there's anything left to say, right? You know, no, I, I think that's pretty much everything we wanted to cover. It, it's it's just mind boggling how this team continues to hang around just enough. Like we're still we're we're still here. We we called both of these must win. They they took one point total in two games, and yet it's still like plausible. Like it's still on the table. It's ridiculous. Well, in an alternate universe, you know, they don't score in overtime. Eric Carlson doesn't beat Alex Lyon. Blocker side low on a screen. just scores there. He was oh. completely, I mean, he had a minute and a half shift. I'm not blaming right. this on him, certainly. He's, you know, the top line produced everything, but Larkin buries that. And it's, you know, different. you're back in control of your own destiny and in a playoff spot. Like yeah. that's how ridiculous this playoff chase has been. But yep. TLDW, uh, Lucas Raymond, very good at hockey, breakout year. Red Wings still somehow alive despite constantly losing hockey games. Correct. Anything else? I don't think so, man. We ball. Oh, yeah, they play Toronto on Saturday. There's okay. your and Matthews has score is chasing 70 goals. So there's your oh, yeah, game. Got, I think 68 is what he ended with. So oh, Dylan Larkin, 500th career point. Congratulations. True, yeah. Puck he off ball. the ice and everything. They got the puck. That's cool. Yep. He deserves it. Um, all right. Yeah, no, Toronto. Well, that, yeah, it's a good team, and now you're in a position where you gotta win. So <laughs> it's a good team chasing milestones. So yeah. Good luck. Uh well, just win, baby. Just win. We ball. Just win. We we ball. We'll be back with the upset on Monday recap in that game. <sighs> same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day. Even if I don't want it to be. <laughs>